Good morning, class. It's time for lesson 116 of your math. Go grab your whiteboard and your math journals and come join me. All right, on your whiteboards, I would like for you to write down the formula for area. The formula for finding area. Three, two, one, boards up. To find the area of any quadrilateral, area equals length times width. Got that? Good, erase your board. Okay, now that you've written down your area, I want you to do it again, but using this. What is the area of this room? In other words, if I was to cover the floor of this room, how much flooring would I need? Solve that on your whiteboard. If you need more time, go ahead and pause the video and solve it, and then push start when you're ready. To solve this, I'm sure that you figured out the length is 20 inches, and the width is also 20 inches, so I'm going to multiply 20 times 20. I can cover up my zeros, and 2 times 2 is 4, and how many zeros? 1, 2. What's my tag going to be because it's area? Not inches, but inches squared. That's the area of this quadrilateral. Now, I want you to use the same quadrilateral and find the perimeter. Pause your computer and find the perimeter and then push play. Perimeter, remember, is the edge around it. If Mrs. Huff was putting edging around this floor all the way around it, then I would be measuring the length of each side. So 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20. I could do 20 plus 20 plus 20, or I could just do 20 plus times 4, because there's four sides. 0 times 4 is 0. 4 times 2 is 8. And what's my tag for perimeter? Not inches squared, just inches, because we're doing two-dimensional or one-dimensional lengths, okay? Let's erase our boards and try something else. On your whiteboards, I'd like for you to write down the formulas for finding change back. Start with the price and work your way through the formula to find change back. Write it down. Go. Okay, I told you to start with the price or the cost. You can say either one of those words interchangeably. What it cost, or what the price was, it's the same thing. And then we should be adding something to it. What are we supposed to add to that, Ella? Our tax, we add our tax. And the cost plus the tax gives us what, Lex? Oh, sorry, this is kind of messy. Cost plus the tax gives us our total cost. Okay, that's the first part. We're still not to change back, though. What do I do next, Esther? I take what I paid with, the money I gave the cashier, and do I add or subtract, Esther? I subtract what? My total cost. Whatever I got over here is what I'm going to subtract. My total cost, and that gives me what, Caden? my change back. Okay, you're gonna need this today in your lesson, so be very careful to have this memorized. Also likely will show up on future tests, might have been on your test yesterday. So make sure you have this memorized. If you don't yet, go ahead and practice it a few times. Erase your board and then check it with this video. Go ahead and grab your journals now, and we have something new to start that we're going to be adding to throughout the next few weeks. I want you to start a new page, whatever that page is in your journal. Go to your table of contents. The very next page will be Roman numerals. Roman numerals. As you're writing that on your table of contents and on your page and numbering it neatly, I want to talk to you about Romans. It's a book in the Bible. It's a group of people that ruled most of the world back at the time of Jesus. Why are we still talking about their numerals? 
Numerals is just a fancy way of saying they're numbers. Before we use the Arabic system, which is the counting system we use now, one, two, three, seven, four hundred, that kind of thing, the Romans used their own sort of counting. And this was used on, in any part of the world that they ruled, which was most of the world. So most of the world back then at Jesus' time used this sort of numbering system. They didn't use one for one or two for two. They used a whole different system. Why do you need to know this? Because we still see it used today. We see it in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm, we do. We see it on buildings. Hmm. We see it in our outlines when we're doing English writing. We see Roman numerals all the time. So it's really important that you know what it means and how to use it. We're going to start where we always start with 1 through 10. The very first thing you need to know that the Romans use the Roman capital letter I to equal 1. So I equals 1. That's easy. How do you suppose they made 2? Well, 1 plus 1 is 2. So two I's would be 2. Makes good sense. 3? Three? 3 I's. Just like that. 3 I's is 3. Now, there's a rule. With one, or with I, you can't use it more than three times in a row. So I can make one with it, and I can use two with it, but I can't use it more than three. So what am I going to do for four? I can't do I, 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 I. I have to come up with a new number. So let's skip ahead, leave four here by himself. We'll come back to him. And let's go to five. The way that the Romans wrote a five was with a capital V. V stood for five. So one is I and V is five. That's nice, but how do I make four? The Romans figured out that if you have five and you take away one, that leaves four. So they used their counting system to show subtraction. Here's V for five. And if I write a number before it, it's subtracting that number. So if I write IV, that's like saying five minus one, which is four. So that's how you write four, IV. It doesn't mean one plus five, it means five minus one, because we have a littler number before the bigger number. Keep that in mind, that's gonna be repeated over and over and over in the Roman system. So we've gotten to five. How do you suppose they made six? They had I's and they had V's. How would you make six? If you said IV, you're not quite right because remember IV means five minus one. But if I flip those and said VI, that's like saying five plus one. Just like when I wrote II, it was one plus one or I, I, I was one plus one plus one, which was three. So if I wrote the I after the five, that would equal six. Okay, writing all this down. How would I make seven? Well, I could repeat my I's up to three times. So let's make seven with five plus one, two. Five plus two is seven. Five plus two is seven. They're showing math and adding and subtracting within their numbers. We don't have that in Arabic numbers. Six just means six. It doesn't mean five plus one, but that's how the Romans did it. Let's try eight. Remember, I can repeat some, the, the letter I up to three times. So V is five plus one, two, three, that makes eight. Number's getting kind of big, isn't it? Remember, we can only repeat I three times. So I've already done that here with eight. One, two, three. What am I going to do with nine? Let's leave nine out here to dry for a moment and skip on to ten. The Romans have come up with I for one, V for five. They came up with a new number for ten. And it's an X. X stands for 10. 
So if 10 is x, how could I make 9? Well, remember how we made 4 from 5? We did i before the v. That means 5 minus 1 is 4. Well, 10 minus 1 is 9. So I can put my x before an i, and that will make 9. 10 minus 1 is 9. Isn't that handy? This is something you're going to need to memorize. And we're going to be practicing 1 through 10 over and over and over every day until it's just solid, super easy for us. Because everything that comes after this builds on these first 10 numbers. So we've got to memorize these 10 really well. 1, 2, 3, 4, which is 5 minus 1, 5. 6, which is 5 plus 1, 7, 5 plus 2, 8, 5 plus 3, 9, 10 minus 1, and 10. I want you to erase your boards if you don't have, if you have stuff from our practice, and we're going to write down again Roman numerals 1 through 10 after you finish writing this into your journal. No peeking at Mrs. Huff's boards. Erasing really good so you can't see it. Let's start by writing our Arabic numbers down. One on our whiteboard. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, what is one? I. What is five? V. And how did we make ten? X. Those are the only three numbers you're allowed. Pause the video and fill in the rest. Okay, I think you've probably filled the rest in. I've only gone to three because I want you to help me think through these harder ones. One, two, and three are pretty basic. We just added one each time. How did I make four again? It was five minus one, so the I has to come before the V to show subtraction. How did I make six? Five plus one. It went after the V, so that shows addition. How did I make seven? Five plus two. And how did I make eight? Five plus three. And how did I make nine? Nine was 10 minus one. So 10 minus one is nine. We have one more thing to learn today, and that is adding decimal numbers. This is super easy, but I want to go over it with you. Go ahead and start a new page. You're going to be using this page for today and tomorrow's lesson. This new page in your table of contents is adding and subtracting. You're like, Mrs. Huff, adding and subtracting? Really? decimals. Write it neatly on your table of contents and do a new page for it, and then come back. All right, adding and subtracting decimals. Today we're only going to do adding. Tomorrow we'll do subtracting. And here's how we do it. You guys know some of these things already because you've been doing numbers um, that you add that have to do with money. Like you guys have done, you don't need to write this one down, but you guys have done $1.23, which is $1.00 two dimes and three pennies plus um, 47 cents, which is four dimes and seven pennies, right? And you've added that before. You guys are really good at that. That's similar to what we're gonna be doing today, but today's is not about money. Today's is using any decimals. And as you get older, you'll see that you use decimals in lots of different ways because our numbers become more complex. And we're talking about pieces of a number, hundreds, thousands, millionths. And so our decimals can get longer and longer. Um, for instance, if I asked you to add this number, 3 and 47 hundredths plus 36 hundredths plus 1 and 4 tenths, well, that could be seeming kind of complicated. Here's the trick whenever you're using decimals. Line up. The decimals. You should be writing this down into your journals. 
I have my decimals in a line. I have one, two, three numbers. When I make my decimals in a line, that's going to also align where these numbers go. My three is in the ones place, which is right here. My four is in the tenths place, which is right here to the right of the decimal. And my seven is in the hundredths place, which is right here. Okay, well, that seems easy. I just copied that down. But as we go on, you'll see it's important to line your numbers up. This one is decimal three, six. Decimal, three is in the tenths, six is in the hundredths. Okay, and this one is one in the ones place on the left of the decimal, and the four is at the right of the decimal. And I'm supposed to add these up? Something looks really wonky here. Did you notice there's this big empty space right here? So here's what you can do. When there's an empty space to make yourself feel better, empty just means nothing. So put a zero there. Now it looks like something we've had before. Let's add these up. Seven plus six is 13. Put my three down, carry the one. One plus four is five. Five plus three is eight. Eight plus four is 12. Put my two down, carry the one. One plus three is four. Four plus one is five. And because I keep my things all in a line, my decimal is gonna go right in that same line. And that's my answer five and 23 hundredths. Notice this isn't money. There's no dollar signs, just decimal points. Five and 23 hundredths could be in a, a measurement of gas or a measurement of, of liquid or a measurement of anything. So know that it isn't always money that we use with decimals. Let's try another one. Um, let's write this one down. I'm gonna give it to you horizontally and you write it vertically in your journal still. You can go ahead and start writing it after you get it horizontally, you can rewrite it vertically. First thing we do is we line up the decimals. I know I have one, two, three numbers I'm gonna add. So one, two, three decimals. Now I'm gonna place my numbers where they go. Two is in the ones place, and three is in the tenths, and seven is in the hundredths. My next number has four in the ones, and six in the tenths. My next one has one in the ones, two in the tenths, and five in the hundredths. Do you see a problem here? There's a big old gap right there. So to make it look better and feel better to me, I'm gonna put a zero. Don't forget to fill in your zeros. Now I can add seven plus five is 12, carry one. One plus three is four, four plus six is 10, 10 plus two is 12, carry the one. One plus three is, one plus two is three, three plus four is Seven, seven plus one is eight. And my final answer is eight and 22 hundredths. All right, go grab your whiteboard and let's practice a couple more of these. All right, copy this down onto your whiteboard just as I have it. Be really careful to line up your decimals and get them in the right places that I have them on the board. Okay, let's see if we can work this one now. Before I get started though, there's something really bothering me. I need to fill in some zeros. Fill in your zeros. If you put your zero right here, that feels better. It was a big old gap. Five plus seven is? I'm gonna have you pause the video. You solve it on your own and then check back with me. Pause. Okay, if you wrote down $16.62, oh wait, what's wrong with that? Because it's not money. It's not $16.62. It's 16 and 62 hundredths. Yeah. If you put a dollar sign here, that's wrong. Erase it. We're just talking about decimals. Copy this one down now. Erase your board and copy it down. Next thing to do after you copy it down is to fill in your zeros. Where should I put some zeros in here? Right here. 
And right here, it needed two zeros. Now go ahead and add, and then check back. All right, if you added correctly, you should have 25 and 25 hundredths. No dollar sign, because it's not money. Okay, go ahead and get started. Notice today that math on lesson 116, I did not assign 25 problems. No, I did not. I only assigned one through, I think, 20, one through 16, I assigned. So don't do one through 25 today, do one through 16. <laughs> You're welcome. Have a great day.